talk planetarium science on a sphere. My name is Lexis and with me today is Nathan. So this year has been exciting for space exploration, filled with many firsts and anniversaries. Today we're celebrating Hubble's 30th anniversary. Oh yeah, the Hubble Space Telescope. I didn't realize it was so old. Is it still working? I thought I had heard it had a lot of issues they were trying to fix. It is true that it has had quite a few repairs and replacements, but most of them have been to help keep it working for so long. I think I heard of one once. It had to do with the mirror? That was the first one, though it was a pretty big one. But don't most telescopes use mirrors? What made the one Hubble uses any different? At the time it was built, the mirror on the Hubble Space Telescope was one of the largest single mirrors made for astronomy. The larger the mirror, the easier it was for small imperfections to be possible in the final polishing process. So the repair you remember hearing about was most likely when Hubble was first sent into orbit. I remember that one of those mirrors had a problem with the images it was taking. Exactly. The primary mirror had an aberration that was 1 50th the thickness of a human hair. So the images that were sent definitely had fewer details than what they were expecting. That small imperfection was so tiny and caused so much trouble. How was NASA able to fix that? Hubble was in space at that point. Astronauts were sent to Hubble and installed new instruments with five pairs of corrective mirrors. It was a process similar to putting a contact on to adjust the flaw. Even though the flaw was so small, it made a big difference when trying to look at all those objects far away. How far away can Hubble see? It seems that most stars in the sky are pretty close by. Well, most of the stars you can see, even on the clearest nights, are sometimes hundreds or even thousands of light years away. If I remember right, a light year is how far or the distance light can travel in one year. I guess that stars aren't all that close, after all. But wait, you said the stars I could see, so what about Hubble? Remember when I said Hubble's mirror was the largest made at the time? One of the reasons for making such a big mirror is because it helps collect light. The more you can collect, the better the image you can get. So to answer your question about how far away Hubble can see, it has taken images of galaxies several billion light years away. Several billion? That means that Hubble is looking back not just at a distance, but deep into time as well. I heard that at one point Hubble took a picture where no one could see any stars at all, but it could see entire galaxies. Yes! What you heard is about the deep field pictures that we've been taking the last few years. In looking at the images here, it's hard to tell which ones are stars and which ones are galaxies. How do astronomers know which are which, or even how far away they are? When looking at the light from these galaxies, astronomers know what they should see in the light spectrum. It looks like there are so many galaxies. How many have astronomers found, or what is the farthest one? They have already identified over 10,000 galaxies so far, and even a star called Icarus that's almost 5 billion light years away. Whoa, that's pretty far. But if these are all galaxies, how was it able to see a single star in all that? You're right, normally we would not be able to see just a single star that far away. But as the starlight travels through space, it can be bent by the gravity of other stars and even galaxies. It's a process called gravitational lensing. Enough of this star's light was bent back together that we were able to see it. It's pretty cool what we can do with telescopes. Hey, speaking of space telescopes, I heard they renamed a new telescope NASA's just getting ready to launch. Wasn't this one getting named after another astronomer as well? You better believe it. The Wide Field Infrared Survey Telescope, or WFIRST, was just named after Nancy Grace Roman, NASA's first chief astronomer. Renaming it after her is not only an honor, but thoughtful and appropriate, as she is known as the Mother of Hubble. Mother of Hubble? How so? While she was NASA's first chief astronomer, she advocated strongly for new tools and technology to help create the means for Hubble to be built and become successful in space. Our technology is amazing, and the people behind those advancements are amazing as well, like Nancy Grace Roman. 
So here is happy 30 years to Hubble and hoping for many more. If you would like to learn more, check out the links below. Happy anniversary, Hubble. And as we get ready to head into summer, remember to keep looking up.